Today, you don't think twice about your Christmas music selections. Just click shuffle on your playlist from any number of music streaming services or here on YouTube. Doris Day and Julie Andrews will play alongside Andy Williams and even Mariah Carey if you so desire, one song at a time without changing the streaming service or music station and definitely not having to change physical media. But that wasn't always the case. I'm Victor, this is The Gen Experience, where to get our favorite collection of Christmas standards, all we had to do was go down to the friendly neighborhood Tire Center. It is almost inconceivable that there was a time you had to go down to an actual music store and peruse display bins for your favorite artists. And if you were looking for an entire album of your favorite singers, a collection of the best songs of Christmas by the most iconic personalities of the genre, think again. That was unheard of if you truly wanted to hear a collection of various musicians and singers to have a diverse musical Christmas BGM, uh, that's background music for you acronym inclined. You were gonna have to shell out some bucks to get multiple albums and have to listen to them one at a time, but things were about to change and if you were looking for the great songs of Christmas, you might wanna think about a new set of tires. It was the mid-century and everybody wanted the most beloved songs that had come from the 40s and 50s and that were staples during your holiday celebration. And they wanted them in one place, classic originals and those born from famous Hollywood movies that stood the test of time and are remembered from generation to generation and sung year after year over and over again. And those Christmas wishes were about to come true. But to own the great songs of Christmas, at least between 1961 and 1977, a family would only need drive to their local Goodyear Tire Center, where the likes of Barbra Streisand and Perry Como were waiting on the same album, a new release that you could only get there. And when albums were $3 and some change, this incredible and never done before collection of various songs and singers was $1. This was not an album of the cute or infantile type Christmas songs, but arrangements of classic seasonal favorites by the world's eminent singers backed with full orchestras. The best-selling yearly Christmas music compilation album series in history, The Great Songs of Christmas. Only available at your Goodyear Tire Center and featuring mostly Columbia artists in a variety of selections. Thank Goodyear and Columbia Records you didn't have to keep changing the vinyl record on the player. They were all there, together. Even if the smell of vulcanized rubber didn't get you buying a set of tires for holiday travel, the desire to own 20 different tracks from the best talents to accompany your traditional family Christmas was worth a drive to a Goodyear. Goodyear had nothing to lose. They didn't even invest in the records. They just sold them in their stores. It was a win-win. They paid nothing and possibly sold some new tires. This came from an idea man, a genius named Stanley Arnold. Once a madman, he struck out on his own, but he didn't want to own an ad agency. His idea made him more a PR guy before that was even a thing. And his loss leader gimmick gamble paid off for Columbia Records. The first album released in 1961 sold out so early that Goodyear had to tell its marketing to stop advertising by the first week of December. 900,000 was the compromised amount of albums Goodyear was willing to host that first year, but it just wasn't enough. And the following year that jumped to 1.5 million and then 2 million the following year. These albums almost always sold out before Christmas. You can't have just one. Folks would get one every single year. They were numbered albums and people wanted the full collection. Kind of like me with some action figures. Now look around. You might even have inherited all this collection from your parents or your grandparents. So, do you know these albums? Do you have any at home? Well, don't worry. I'm about to show you each and every one of them so you can check them off your list. These albums would become an annual tradition and a yearly trip to Goodyear as one, if not the only spot, to have such a valuable collection that required you nothing but a drive to the tire guy and one dollar. No other purchases needed. If you needed something else, then yes, that was a bonus to Goodyear, but they didn't care. The albums just lived in their store, as long as they still had the inventory. These were so popular, you can't trip over one of these albums in your local music stores today when thumbing through the vintage or classic albums. Look for the numbered issue of the Columbia record called The Great Songs of Christmas. Well, here they are, the most famous Christmas collection albums ever, starting with 1961. 
with the debut album in 1961. You can see at the top, it says collector's album, limited edition. Limited edition was probably a fairly new term for the masses. It also wasn't numbered until the second one where they began to have the album two, album three added to these fantastic collections of great songs by great artists. The names, they were a change in. Barbra Streisand had debuted in the 1965 album, but always the classics would remain with a few change outs, whether it was orchestrations or the newest, greatest artists of the time. For their 10th album in 1970, The Great Songs of Christmas became the best of The Great Songs of Christmas. Not quite a name change, but that was soon to come. The next year, as a matter of fact, in 1971 with the Joyous Songs of Christmas, which began a tradition for a little while of changing the title each year. <music> 1975's album was a big year as it went back to the Great Songs of Christmas as a title, but Columbia was out and RCA was in. This was a big era of change as RCA used mostly their artists and had affiliates with Firestone and BF Goodrich as well. But more on that expansion later as the whole marketing scheme seemed to get diluted. The last two albums of Goodyear marked the end. One of them was all Mancini selections and last was Perry Como and Eugene Ormandy. A sure sign that, well, times they were a changing. This loss leader gimmick worked out so amazingly. It spawned some imitators one year later. Goodyear's rival Firestone had its own custom line of yearly holiday albums custom made by Columbia's rival RCA Records. And they also appeared in the BF Goodrich starting in 1962. The albums themselves were very original. The album cover art changed yearly and was gorgeous. It often took a more majestic and even religious tone with stained glass windows or angels, something you sadly don't see as much today. The roster of artists also kept it fresh. It was varied and changed often, well, most of the time, keeping some of the most popular singers on each release, but with new song selections made it a must have to complete your collection each year. This was one of the reasons it was so popular. When RCA Firestone might only have one of their artists for an entire album, like the one that was all Julie Andrews, Columbia had great variety, which kept it on top for most of the years. Although the bulk of recordings used to make each LP was taken from existing Christmas albums by the individual artists, there were always individual tracks that were commissioned especially for almost every single album. These exclusive recordings are so rare that to this day cannot be found anywhere else. It came to a point where other retailers were also interested in releasing their own tie-in packaged compilation albums. Stores like JCPenney, Sears, A&P Grocery, Safeway, and several others also offered holiday music compilations of their own through the major labels. And now Goodyear and Firestone were just two of many, causing a slump in their sales and popularity. It was starting to get easier to attain such a collection. The music labels also offered non-tie-in compilation albums, sometimes with the same track listing and order as their Goodyear or Firestone album releases. These were available through any retailer, through the special product or special market divisions, and most likely at the normal album price, which also contributed to the obvious end of the tradition. Didn't need to drive to Goodyear anymore, just stop by the local store. Now, the last official Goodyear release was issued in 1989, after a 12-year hiatus from the most recent in 1977. Surprisingly, the Christmas album Lost Leader gimmick remained popular through the 1980s in various forms and by different companies for different promotions. By the 90s, the production had, of course, switched exclusively to cassettes and CDs. One of the last attempts at a Christmas Lost Leader series, these cassettes were produced by RCA, in 1991 and marketed by none other than Winston Cigarettes. They were given away free with the purchase of specially marked two-pack boxes of smokes. Today we know how easy it is to have all the music, all by the same artist or a variety on your specially curated playlists on a half a dozen streaming apps. Another tradition sadly gone by the wayside. We can at least be grateful that the music has never stopped and no matter how you get it, the great songs of Christmas live on in merchant and homes across the globe. I hope your holidays are filled with the joy that this music brings. Thanks for coming. Merry Christmas to all. And until next time.